Uh, my name is Christine Belson, and I produce animated movies. I executive produced a film called How to Train Your Dragon, and I produced a film called The Crudes, and I'm currently working on the sequel to The Crudes. Excellent. And I am 1986, the year of 86. Wow, we're staying in years. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I don't care. I'm about to turn 50, everybody. Go on. <laughs> uh, I'm Will McCormick. I'm a, a writer and, uh, and a producer and an actor. I um, co-wrote a movie called Celeste and Jesse Forever, which I also produced. And I'm producing a television show called A to Z on NBC this fall, uh, Thursdays at 9.30. I am Billy Lazarus. I am class of 93. I'm a talent agent. Uh, and I went to Trinity because my dad uh, went there. And I went to go visit, liked it, got in. I'm Chris Hogan. I'm uh, a writer. I have a pilot, an animated pilot at Fox. Uh, I was an actor for a long time on Third Rock from the Sun, Mad TV, a bunch of movies, West Wing. Um, yeah. Love the West Wing. Good show. What year? What year was I on the no, West Wing? No, Trinity. Ugh, 1980. Five. Wow. When Will was born, I was at Will's baptism. I'll never forget it. How did you hear about Trinity? How did you end up at Trinity? You know, unlike a lot of kids at Trinity, the honest to God truth is I wasn't really preparing that well for college. I had sort of <laughs> remiss parents. Um, uh, and uh, nice way of saying it, though. Yes, yeah. and we didn't really pay much attention until the absolute moment, last moment, when we ran around and tried to get interviews at colleges and realized, oh my god, you're supposed to do that well in advance. <laughs> but I got that one interview at Trinity, and I don't know, they decided to let me in. And you loved it? I mostly loved it. I mean, it was a hard transition, I'm not going to lie. It felt That's very different when I first got there. Um, and then I sort of found my people, and then I loved it. I grew up in Plainfield, New Jersey, and um, my sisters Bridget and Mary had gone to Trinity, and I just visited them a lot when I was a kid. They're much, much older. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't think Mary's ancient, see in this. fact. Ancient. Yeah, they're old. Um, but um, I, they had done they so well there. Right. What? They started. Founders. They started. Yeah. Founding sisters. Class of 1899. Eight. There's a statue of your family next to the bishop, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that in the quad? Actually, yeah. yeah. Bishop McCormick. Yeah. <laughs> no, they changed the name to Bishop McCormick. Yeah. Yeah. I loved and admired and my sisters. I, I, you know, as a, as their younger brother, I sort of worshipped them. They were these superstars in our family. And um, Bridget had gone to Trinity and was a philosophy uh, major and a religion major, and then she went to Emory Law School. And now she's. Uh, a Supreme Court Justice in the state of Michigan. She's done Holy very cow. well. Who, by the way, is famous at Trinity now for having given an amazing she gave commencement, a commencement speech. commencement speech two years ago? Oh, wow. Yeah, which I watched on Did YouTube. I hear about it? You can check it out. Um, and Mary had gone to, to Trinity and done very well in the performing arts as a singer and as an actress. And um, she's also a really good artist. And she went to New York and had a very successful acting career. And um, it just never occurred to me to go anywhere else. And then I went there, and I was, um, I was an English literature major and uh, a theater minor. But I did tons of plays. And I, I think the, the best part about going to Trinity College was I worked at Cine Studio, yeah. oh. which is still the greatest movie theater in the United States of America. And I worked there for four years, and I saw every single movie that um, showed there. I was security. So you don't you didn't want to mess around. Oh right, yeah. yeah. I, you know, a lot of people have come out of Trinity and been really successful in entertainment too. Billy, how did you end up in Hartford, um, Connecticut? I ended up there because my father went there, and um, I think I went for an alum. I, I did. I went for like a Children of Alumni weekend, and what was the name of the acapella group? The Trinity Pipes. Tone? The Pipes. Trinity I Pipes. totally wanted to be one of them, but I suck. As a singer as well as an actor. <laughs> I think I auditioned. I did. I'm just trying to block it out. No idea. And and I again I, I my dad went there, he loved it, I liked it. Mm -hmm. It was it was easy. And you're from Long Island. Long Island, Island. yes. Great Great right. neck. Yeah. So yeah. Chris Hogan, where There's, are you yeah. from? I'm from Westchester County, New York. I'm from a West weird Chester. town called East Chester that's in Westchester. Okay. Yeah, and I majored in history and then studied a lot of uh, art history and economics, actually. And it's so crazy that, well, we'll get into that. But you must that. have been doing theater stuff. No. You didn't do any theater None. stuff and then started acting after college? Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was a Latin American studies major. Were you really? Oh, you missed that. Top that. Wait, totally. that's so cool. Were there a lot of you? That seems kind I of awesome. Mm -hmm. That does seem very forward thinking. It does seem kind of forward thinking. I see, I see. Meta, meta. I think that might be Italian. <laughs> what did you think you'd be doing when you left Trinity? Not this. Not this, Not right? this interview, for sure. <laughs> Um, That's making the cut. Yeah. Um, that is making the cut. I didn't friend. think I would be doing this at all. I wanted to stay out of the movie business. My father was a screenwriter. I just thought, no way am I going to do that. Can I embarrass you? Your dad was also like. Yeah, but not super everybody knows famous. who my dad is. My dad like was. He's passed away now. He's like an old time Jerry TV Belson writer, like the with odd Gary couple, Marshall, Mary like, Tyler Moore. Huge. Yeah, That's amazing. That was my dad. He, he's, he's royalty. Incredible. He's, he was an he's awesome royalty. guy. So did you actually. grow up um, not wanting to be in the business? I grew up not wanting to be in the business. And I didn't really grow up in the business because my parents were divorced. My mom was like a Swedish hippie who sort of took me away from it all. But right. I, yeah, for a bunch of reasons, I, I just was convinced I'm not going to do this. So it's either Swedish hippie or TV writer. Exactly. And I was like, I don't want to do either of those right. things. So I'm going to be a Swedish First it was I'm going to be a doctor and then I got rid of that. And then it was more like, I'll do publishing or oh. in the theater. Yeah. Or, yeah, none of those worked out. Did you know, Billy, like what... Did you know what you wanted to do, even if you were wrong at the time? I mean, I'm a Jew from Long Island. Like, I'm supposed to be a lawyer or a doctor. And right. so I did not want to be either of those things. I took the LSATs, didn't want to go to law school. I watched my father operate, passed out cold on the floor. So I, I knew I wanted to be in something in entertainment. He passed but out cold? No, I did. I did. I did. Yeah, he was fine. Um, I knew I wanted to do something in entertainment, but it wasn't until I just came out here for a trip with my cousin that I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I was gonna go to broadcast journalism school, right. which I thought was sort of the happy medium between a real job and being on television. Right. Um, and yeah. then <laughs> I realized like you'd have to go to like the middle of the country somewhere and right. earn your stripes and that wasn't happening. And I came out here and, and knew I loved it out here and wanted to do this job in this world. At first, of course, I thought I was just going to be a movie star. That didn't work out. I worked in casting for a little bit. You didn't even make pipes. How did you think you were I know. Yeah, I, well, because you could just become a star without singing. You don't sing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and not a star. Um, and then I worked in publicity for a little bit, and then been an agent for 13 years. Did you do the whole, like, mail room? No. I was yeah. really lucky. I just got hired as an agent one day. Wait, you didn't um, even have to be an Billy's, assistant? Billy's also... I didn't have to be an assistant. Billy's being humble. Billy's... Billy's... He's a, big, uh, a very big age. I kind of was getting the vibe that Billy was a big deal. Yeah. He is. He's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. You all should be very excited that I'm here. I am. I am. You represent people who play doctors. True. True. And True. lawyers. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I never would have thought that I would... I, there was nothing about my early education that would have lent itself to me doing this job or ending up here. Right. Right. Will, you more? I mean, you knew you wanted to act, it sounds like. I mean, yeah, I did. Yeah. And you had your older sister to sort of emulate. Yeah, I did, but she was even, she was reluctant to encourage me just because I think she, she knows how hard it is, you know? I mean, I think it, if you want to make it, try to make it as a, in, in entertainment on the talent side, you really, you should have no other plan with your life. I mean, I think you have to go into it knowing that, you know, that's, if you have something else that, that with your life horrible. that you're considering and doing, you, you should do it. You need because to love it every single it's minute so, of your day. Yeah, it's so, it's there's brutal. so much yeah. rejection. It's so enervating. There's so much failure. Everyone tells you you can't do it. Everyone tells you you shouldn't do it. So there really has to be some sort of like thing in you that believes that you just have to. And I, I, when I graduated from school, it, it never even occurred to me to do anything else. It wasn't even like a choice I made. I remember my theater professor at school telling me, um, it takes 10 years to even make a name for yourself. And, you know, for me, um, it took longer than that. It took, you know, it took 10 years to, you know, feel like you have some sort of standing in the business. And then it takes another five uh, to, to make a name for yourself. And, you know, I'm 40 now, I just turned 40 this year. And I just feel like, you know, with every step of the way, it, you, you, you build a career, but it does take a long time. And I don't think that if I had had um, that sort of, if I was so insistent, on, if I wasn't so insistent upon doing it, I think I would have quit, you know? I just like had to do it. But I was really lucky. I did a play in, in college and, and just fell in love with it. And it was like instant. I just knew that. It was nice like, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we didn't know, you knew, yeah. and you, 
Yeah, what did you think you were going to be? I actually thought I was going to end up in New York working at an auction house um, or in a bank. Wait, at an auction house? Yeah, I love I'm art. Sure. Did your friends know that you would be an actor? Like, yes, they right. did. I was kind of a ham, and I right. did a lot of you know, presentation stuff for training, but I never acted. Right. But I'm surprised. And I, I studied a lot of uh, creative writing and wrote some poetry. And <laughs> I, I, um, I cleaned out a storage space recently, and, and I, I did Chris the huge favor of, I found, I forget what it was called, the Trinity Art Review. The Trinity something. Review, and I found a poem by Chris, and I, I oh, texted it to yeah, him. I, it I think it was about, I it, was about it, right? it was the Butcher, right? It, it was about called the butcher. butcher. It was about the Butcher, it yeah. It was super, mm -hmm. it was pretty so, I can't recall it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get here to LA? Like, like I'll, I'll, I'll start just to give you an example of this question. Okay. So How my basic crazy ride is I'm at Trinity. I leave. Uh, my dad is a, was like an original Madison Avenue madman kind of guy. He wants me to go work for his advertising agency. I said, no, I'm going to paint houses on Cape Cod with another Trinity guy. So we paint houses. Then we start this little company together. And we start hiring a lot of people, company. like 25 people. And then we started a water Just filtration systems company, yeah. Right. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my god, this isn't what I want to do. And my dad thinks he's going to come home. And so he calls his best friend, who's John Cusack's father, Dick Cusack, and says, I think he's coming home, Would you?" because he used to be an advertiser, will you talk him into it? And Dick Cusack said, Jesus Christ, you have a facile imagination. What do you want to go into business for? You're a creative person. Can't you see that? And he's the first person who ever spoke to me like that. And he said, come to Chicago, live in our attic, study with the Pivens. What are you going to be, 24 years old and look back on your life and say I could have done something? Wow. And so, sight unseen. Your dad unseen. was like, thanks. Yeah. yeah, my dad was like, not quite was I, what I was hoping. And so I moved to Chicago. Love the attic part. Mm -hmm. Lived in their attic. Yeah. Nice. It was, yeah, <laughs> next to the old hope chest. <laughs> that crocheted blanket kept me cold in those places. Um, but yeah, and then I fell into this crowd of Northwestern people, and they were all in a theater company, and we started just tearing it up. And a show I did there called The Chris Hogan Show was the Stream of Consciousness Improv Show with another guy. NBC came another to Chicago. Show I did there called The Chris Hogan Show. I know, with another guy. Well, but another the show guy. wasn't named well, after the other guy. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it a crazy show. Yeah, so then uh, we, we got, NBC came to see it. They pulled us to LA, and we got signed by ICM by all these agents, and it was this big, crazy, weird ride. And, um, and then my partner and I split, but I kept acting, and um, I had a good career. And then I got kind of bored, and I decided to try something else. And so I met up with these two other guys, and we started making videos for YouTube, and we got three million views for four videos. And so we started writing shows together. I sold the sold show to the Tannenbaums who created Two and a Half Men. It didn't get made, but I was like, maybe I'm onto something. Okay. So here I am now. I have a, I'm on my third pilot for Fox. It's an animated pilot and um, it's being animated now. Unlike maybe a lot of kids at the time, certainly unlike kids now who come out of college with a plan, I, had, I didn't have a plan. And so, wasn't chic back then. Right? Yeah. And yeah. So, right. So cool to have no plan. Yeah. Right? No, right? Yeah. What are you so going to do with it? Now you can. Now you can. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it was so awesome. I was like, I yeah. don't know. And so I just went home yeah, I because know. I didn't have anything better to do. So I went home, which is here. My dad, being represented at CA, was like, I'll just get you. I can read and write, so I'll get you a job as a reader at CA. Yeah, you know what? Reading and scripts and writing coverage and stuff—it's all great. But like, I just want to go back to New York and back to the East Coast and stay with this guy. So I went back there and I worked in publishing and I worked in off-Broadway theater, and realized I hated those things. I worked production, which I liked a little bit more, but I'm not a production girl. I didn't want to stand on set for 14 hours a day. They'd always find me sleeping somewhere, like under something. Yeah. I was always like the person who was like in a weird like crate asleep. Anyway, so again, a series of studio jobs culminating in working at the Henson Company, which was fantastic. I loved it there. I love making Muppet movies, but I was ready for a change. And about eight years ago, somebody from DreamWorks Animation approached me and said, have you ever thought about animation? And I said, not much. Um, and I started talking to them, and I love it. I love working in animation. It's really different, um, the process of it, which is a whole other conversation. But that's my path. So yeah, I was supposed to be a lawyer, a doctor. I didn't want to do that. So I went back to New York and I kind of worked in a law firm for a minute while I was struggling with that decision. Yes. 
uh, yeah, uh, as, as, as sort of like a paralegal, paralegal stuff, that not totally solidified not the fact that I did not want to be a lawyer. Not a messenger? No, not a messenger. I don't do messenger. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, a friend, my cousin actually, was going to go to Paris, which the trip got canceled, and she said, I'm going to LA. At the, in the meantime, I had applied to journalism school because that was sort of the oh, happy right. medium between, so I, and I got waitlisted at Northwestern. So I had six oh, months. Cool in between to become a movie star. Um, so I moved, to, I moved to LA to become a movie star and quickly realized that wasn't going to happen. So I, I got a job working in casting, which I didn't even really understand, but it was awesome and I could read with actors and, and I loved casting and it was a great way for me to learn the business and from all sides of it and obviously from the actor's point of view. Um, but I didn't really want to go to an agency and be an assistant and you know, yeah, I saw Swimming with Sharks and it freaked yeah. me out and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to be burned out. or killed. Um, but uh, I got a job at a publicity company um, called Duvain Baum Halls, which no longer exists. Mm -hmm. um, it has since merged with a bunch of other companies and, and I didn't even really understand what publicity for actors wa was. I didn't know that you, someone procured someone to be on a magazine cover. I thought that just happened. Someone right. talked to like, someone and there was a photo shoot and there you go. Um, and I did that for about a year in LA, which I met his sister, who was a client there. And um, I think for the Howard Stern mm -hmm. movie. Uh, and uh, exactly. And um, I loved it. It was so much fun. I was traveling around the world with movie stars and, you know, lear learning a ton, learning, you know, the world of actors. But that, and then I moved back to New York to run their company for the office of that company for about. Uh, three years and then I got hired wow. three years later at UTA to be an agent I actually had a job offer from another company Endeavor which was Endeavor at the time felt like an actor for five seconds came out to LA met everybody and just sort of went with my gut and have been an agent at UTA for 13 years that's yeah. amazing yeah I, I'm amazing yeah. you are amazing, amazing. <laughs> that's yeah, a big I mean you don't it was a cool story in the fact that like years, yeah also that like I didn't ever really do the job, but the job at hand was sales and selling and the gift right. of gab and taste and reading and, you know, it took about a year to get up and running in a real significant way. My parents loved, they had absolutely no, they were the, never pushing me to become a lawyer or a doctor, right. but in my brain that's what I was supposed I to do. Um, and yeah, but they love the entertainment. My mom loves it. All right, so it's Will's turn. I moved to Manhattan to be an off-Broadway theater actor, and I, I accomplished my goals. I, I did plays at Playwrights Horizons, the Manhattan Theater wow. Club, and the Vineyard, and that's serious. I got to be in premieres from playwrights who I loved, you know, um, like John Robin Bates and Paula Vogel. And then I did, um, I did a play at Manhattan Theater Club, and then they, there was a production here at the Geffen Playhouse in Westwood, and I came with it. I got, I had an audition for a huge Western from Warner Brothers and I had never done a film before. I had done a little bit of TV. I had been on The Sopranos in New York and um, just a couple other and little law things. Law Order. I never got a Law and Order. I couldn't get a Law and Order. It's what like, were you on The Sopranos? I was on The Sopranos. What were you on? I played Lorraine Bracco's son. Nice. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I was Meadow's guidance counselor at Columbia. Really? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And I really enjoyed sort of the technical side of film and TV acting more, and 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 you actually you actually can get paid. Yeah. Like you can get paid to act, which for me, you know, living in New York City, I lived with four people, and you made you know an off Broadway contract that you make four hundred and fifty five dollars a week, and 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 you're kind of successful. You're doing these plays, but you can't like you actually can't. You can barely live. So um, then I continued to act, and I I got some more movies. So you like some money. I did it for the money. Yeah. 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 Uh, and by technical, I I, by technical, I mean money. Yeah. <laughs> I was interested in film acting and TV acting because I had been doing so much theater. And, um, and then I was sort of on TV shows that I didn't watch and, and um, I was sort of floundering and I, I, I don't know, I sort of felt uninspired and my secret dream was to always be a, a writer. And um, I had a lot of fear about it and then somehow, I don't know, it went away. And, um, I took a couple screenwriting classes and I started writing films and then 
Uh, my, my, I have a writing partner named Rashida Jones, and she and I um, wrote a movie, it got into Sundance, Sony Pictures Classics bought it, it came out, did fine. It's great. It's Thank great. you. It did it's, called, well. it's called Celeste and Jesse Forever, and that for me was, you know, um, a huge break in my career. It's not really until you take your career into your own hands. I mean, as an actor, yeah. you know, you can just sort of, you can kick around forever and at a certain point you get to a certain age and it, maybe if my career had been better I would have continued to do it, but at, at a certain point you have to take your career into your own hands and you have to create content and, and everything changed once I said uh, I had a script that people wanted to buy. Um, right. Well, then you're in control of things. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun place to be rather than totally. like to write. Totally. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's a, it is a strange path, though, because acting is so fulfilling when you're doing it. And when you're not doing it, yeah. if you have creative bones in your body, it's super difficult. You it's the, it's the hardest part of this job, I think, and obviously I see that side of it from the actor's point of view. Like, uh, you can't just go do it. All right. Yeah. Highlight of your career. The highlight of my career was getting nominated for an Oscar. I mean, you know, thank you. I mean, well I, 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 it was exciting. How about you, Chris? Uh, I think the highlight for me was uh, working on Third Rock from the Sun with so many people and then realizing that, that the writers, the actors, everyone sort of treated each other with such respect that we're all still friends, and I actually learned about writing sitcoms just being on that show. Um, and then I'd say the other highlight is now, which is... This conversation? This conversation, <laughs> sitting next to Billy Lazarus, mm -hmm. finally. Right? It, it's, it, the it's, moment is arrived. Right. Mm -hmm. um, no, you're creating a show. Yeah, you're creating and that a show. is the craziest thing. We just cast Sherry O'Terry, Chris Parnell, Jenny Slate, um, Andrew Reynolds, I mean, Joe, DeR like this incredible cast. And it's something that came out of our heads, my writing partners and I, our heads. And to see it come to life is it's awesome. extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. Extraordinary. Yay. So he's living his highlight right now. How about <laughs> <I> you, Billy? <really? laughs> Honestly, like, I, I was so obsessed with, it's funny that this wasn't a dream, really, to be on this side of it with, you know, being an agent which I kind of feel like I'm a producer every day. Right. So getting to be a part of putting things together. Um, because I was so obsessed with movies and television growing up. So for me, the highlight is, I mean, to not sound like a cheese ball, but like every day is a highlight. Right. Like getting to be a part of putting movies and TV shows together that, that like people watch and getting things that are in pop culture and you know things that my family likes and my friends like. and you know, being at the inception of some of those things, right. not, you know, all pop culture, but some of those things is, is pretty, pretty fantastic. That's so great. That's the answer for me. Um, yeah, probably making a movie, you know, with my, my best friend and, and, and having it um, go to Sundance and have it come out and, and actually be something that feels like a representation of who we are as, as actors and writers and as producers. You know, the people loved that, saw it, went to see it, yeah. paid money to see it. Right, like, having my like, dad yeah. fly out there to Utah yeah. and just be there in That's front awesome. of thousands of people and just have struggled for years and years and to see it sort of culminate in a way where you, you make something. Because so often, you know, you, you try to make things and they don't get made or it doesn't come out quite right. And, and that movie does really feel like a, like a representation of like, kind of who I, like how I want to be as a writer. And, and this sort of comes around to like what you would tell someone at Trinity now. You know, who's if they wanted to be in the entertainment, entertainment industry, right. And I for sure would say hard work, tenacity, perseverance, ability to take rejection, and, and a belief in yourself. Because you, the, the thing about the rejection is you just need one person just need to say one. yes. Just one you need person. One, but you have to. And I'd say get your ass out here. Yeah, really. Get that's the only thing I, I should have done it a, a minute sooner. I don't regret any of my own right. path, but like, yeah, I, at the, I could change something. I just would have come out there sooner. Right. I also think find people that you admire and that you want to work with. Yeah. And if you can't work with them, work for them until you work with them. And don't do, do more than one thing. And is there Honestly. any one Trinity person that was a, an influence? Fred File was a really was big deal. He really, he was the guy. He was the studio guy, right? Yeah. He actually was the film studies guy, but he didn't actually, I don't know how connected he was to Cine Studio. I mean, he loves Cine Studio, but he just taught film studies courses that yeah. were great. He was, he was amazing. He really was great. And you know, he passed away, and he's a big, 
he, he's got a building named after him. Uh -huh. and I think there's, a, I think he's still kind of a strong presence on campus. Actually. That's cool. I'd say for me, the entire history department was like five seventy-year-old men who were all just master storytellers. I loved my advisor, Dirk Kurt, who was um, oh my god, Dirk. In this part, he taught me Faulkner. He really, he taught me how to read. I mean, and to be like a really scrupulous, thorough reader and a critical thinker, and he, he was probably, like, I, I'd never, I don't even think I knew how to read before I met him. He just really taught me how to read, you know, in like a, a critical way. What advice would you give to your Trinity self now? Looking back, <gasps> what would you say to yourself now, knowing what you know? Don't you, you ever know, eat carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we just linger on that for a minute? I would say right? less kind of patty mouse. Less patty mouse? True. God, I don't have one. Go first. I'll think of one. Mine is kind of serious. I can't Do believe it. it. Be serious. You're very serious. Mine's okay. definitely not going to be serious. Mine would be uh, take more risks. Say yes more. And don't be afraid to be different and to do take risks academically and creatively. I feel like... For a kid from suburbia like I was, I got to Trinity and I was like, oh, I, I kind of need to be like everybody else. Because it's such a beautiful campus. And you know, there were a lot of pretty people there. Right. But there's so much incredible learning to be had there. And there's so many resources. Like I love that you guys love Sin Studio. And I love that you studied, you know, the entire continent of the <laughs> but, but I But I feel like See. it's very easy as a kid <laughs> I interview kids for Trinity now, and it's very... Do you really? Yeah. That's awesome. It's kind of interesting to see, like, they come loaded, loaded with... They're smarter than we were. Way smarter. So much smarter. So yeah. much smarter. Yeah. smarter. Doing ambition. so much more. And I always tell them, if you get in, and a couple of them have gotten in, take advantage of that entire experience. I went to the Rome program. It was amazing. It was great. You know, I went to Florence. You did? Nice. Yeah. I think that would sort of be mine. As a, maybe it's a slightly a variation on that, which is, it, it may be particular to me, I just, I didn't sort of figure out how to really take advantage of it until too late. Yeah, like I, I was kind yeah. Of, yeah. But I think you're dead on with that. I mean, I, I went abroad my junior year and then I came back and I was like, oh my God, it's this is, this, yeah. like, I, and this college is incredible. Yeah. And I, in my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't take advantage of it in the way that I, I wished that I had. I really had a lot of regret. Like my senior year, I tried to do everything I could to make up for the lost yeah. time, but you yeah. can't really yeah. ever make up for lost time. So. Take advantage of everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And don't worry about what's not perfect about it. Just like pursue what's awesome about it. And don't worry about what isn't. It's like, it's seldom we meet in the moonlight so sweet meet the arms of our dear, dear old Trinity. Trinity. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you did it. You did it.